exploring the intricacies and ethical dilemmas inherent in military intervention is paramount. Ms. Lotkin just said there'll be about a thousand U.S. service members operating a peer system off of Gaza. How many of them will have guns, Mr. Secretary? Well, typically all of the uh, deployed service, member carry, uh, service members carry guns, and they have the ability to protect themselves if, if challenged. So if someone from land in Gaza shoots at our service members who are on the $320 million pier that we're building, you're telling me our service members can shoot back? They, they, have, the, they have the right to, uh, to return fire to protect themselves. Now, well, do now we again, think that's like, so now I want to move to the likelihood that you think someone from land in Gaza might shoot at our service members on this pier. Do you think that that's a likely scenario? That's possible, yes. This is a very telling moment, Mr. Secretary, because you've said something that's quite possible that could happen, right? Shots from Gaza on our service members, and then the response, our armed service members shooting live fire into Gaza. That is a possible outcome here so that we can become the port authority and run this pier, right? Uh, that, that, that's correct. You know, I, I expect that we will always Don't have the ability to protect ourselves. Don't you think that counts as boots on the ground? President Biden told the country that we weren't going to have boots on the ground in Gaza. And we won't. Okay, but you guys parse the distinction between, like when Americans think boots on the ground, they think Americans in harm's way or engaged actively in a conflict. You guys seem to be sort of um, saying that boots on a pier connected to the ground, connected to service members shooting into Gaza doesn't count as boots on the ground? It, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to find the, the American people have a different perspective on that. And if we're going to have people shooting into Gaza, we probably should have a vote on that pursuant to our war powers. Questioning the prudence of escalating tensions while acknowledging the valid security concerns articulated by Representative Gates prompts reflection on the potential ramifications of military measures. Critique emerges regarding the application of force to pursue geopolitical objectives in volatile regions like Gaza, advocating instead for a nuanced diplomatic approach to addressing underlying issues. Emphasis is placed on safeguarding national security, bolstering strength, and defending American interests abroad. Aligning with Representative Matt Gates's apprehensions regarding the safety of American troops and the necessity of securing strategic assets such as Gaza Pier, underscores the public's inclination toward a robust military stance, perceiving force as a justified means of safeguarding American interests and regional stability. Discourse surrounding military intervention and national security underscores the interplay of fear, aggression, and collective identity in shaping perspectives on conflict and the use of force. Deliberation and ethical considerations are highlighted as imperative in decision-making processes, acknowledging the profound impact of military intervention on both military personnel and civilian populations.